Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to this traditional folders update. As you can probably tell in my voice, I've got a little bit of a cold, but that's not going to stop me from getting into some traditional folders that I've really enjoyed over the past year or so. Uh, we've got a few new case knives here that I'm going to introduce you to here shortly. And we've also got some of the ones that I've shown you in previous videos, as well as a non-case knife. This is the GEC Titty Out number 13 um, Clerk. And I'll show that off here in a little bit, as well as talk about it and contrast it a little bit against some of the case knives um, that I also enjoy quite a bit as traditional folders. So let's get into some quick introductions real quick. This guy right here is the Case Copper Lock, the Mini Copper Lock. Runs about 54 bucks or so, and that one is in, I think it's Amber Bone? Yeah, Amber Bone, and again, the GEC number 13. This is the Case Mini Trapper, and I think that that is in a Smooth Chestnut Bone. Um, then we have the Peanut. Again, I've shown this in a previous video. This one, I believe, is in Denim, uh, Jig Denim Bone or something like that. Um, next, we've got over here the Case Sow Belly, and I think that that one is Orange Bone with the Spay Blade, the... Um, sheep's foot blade and the clip blade then we've got the oh my goodness there's so many to get through and so many names to remember oh yeah the whittler um again with the sort of um uh, i think i call it jigged hunter green bone real pretty really nice color to it um cool bolsters on it and everything else but it's got the uh warncliffe blade on it as well as the pen blade and the what's that called in coping blade then we have here, this is a very, very common uh, pattern right there. That is the Stockman. With a different kind of a twist to it, this has got the, I believe that's an awl uh, blade on, on it, and it's instead of what would be the spay blade. Most Stockmans, you'll see a spay blade right there, but they kind of vary depending on what you want to get and, and um, sort of what version of the pattern you pick up. Clip blade as well as sheep's foot blade. Then here we have um, a really nice looking very small one called the uh, mini copperhead great pattern as well with the warncliffe blade and the pen blade difference between warncliffe and a sheep's foot um, you can pretty much tell by looking at them here let me just grab one of each and uh, compare them so there's the sheep's foot there on the stockman you can see that it has a very abrupt drop whereas the uh, the Warncliffe style has a very gradual drop. That is more or less the big difference. They both have a very flat, straight cutting edge, but it's the it's the drop on the back that makes the difference and makes it either a Warncliffe, Warncliffe or a sheep's foot. So just just for your information there. And yeah, this is a big spoon that I carved using the four of these, and I'll throw in some footage throughout the video to kind of. Um, explain sort of how that went and how I used each one of these um, to, to get some of that work done. But I'll give you a quick look at that. It's very roughly done still. Could spend quite a bit more time on it to really polish it off. But this is about what I was able to accomplish in the space of, I think it was about an hour of carving and then plus maybe half an hour of hunting for the right branch and uh, kind of getting it prepped and everything. But yeah, as far as straight up carving was concerned, I'd say that was at least an hour of carving, maybe more. Uh, the bowl just takes forever, forever to get that drilled out. Um, and we'll talk about sort of how that's done as well. And then the rest of it, you know, the rest of it shaping that is not too big of a deal. Um, yeah, but, but spoons are fun to do. They're fun. They take a while, but when you get one done that just turns out really great, I mean, it's, it's a challenge and that's kind of why it's so much fun. So I enjoy kind of doing spoons as a way to, to test knives, particularly whittling knives, particularly traditional folding whittling knives. So let's talk about some of these patterns and kind of what makes them interesting, why I like them and what some of my favorites are here on the table. I would say of the four here that is my favorite um, for practical use, I'd have to say the sow belly and I'm actually quite surprised by that. You get a nice meaty grip on it. And let's go ahead and close some of those blades so we can safely show you what I'm talking about. Let's say you're using the clip blade right there. Now you do have a little bit of, uh, you know, some of the backs of the blades kind of in your, your fingers there, but it's not hard to deal with. You've got a nice meaty, meaty uh, handle to grab onto, those beautiful covers giving you a nice slick, but yet kind of textured feel. 
um, and a good broad clip blade. So from a, a using standpoint, as far as whittling and carving and just getting some work done, I've really liked the sow belly. So again, the, sow, the, uh, the clip blade on that sow belly with a nice nail nick there and a slight swedge on the top, very easy to use, very utilitarian, really good blade. But in addition to that, we've got this terrific spay blade, which you cannot carve a bowl out on a spoon very easily without some kind of a spay blade. This makes the job so much faster, so much easier. The, the way you do it is basically you get that into the, the spoon like that, and you can see that the shape of the blade would follow the contour of the inside of the spoon. And so that's why it's so much easier to sort of carve out the bowl uh, with a spay blade. Without one, you can kind of make it work if you really, really, really take your time. I've done it before, but it's not as fun and you know, it's just, you feel like you're using the wrong tool. So having a good spay blade is terrific if you're gonna do some whittling. And lastly, that nice sheep's foot blade with a good little uh, back cut swedge on it as well. Good looking and just a good utility, uh, utilitarian type of a blade as well. Um, it's gonna be good for a lot of things. I think it's, you know, I could kind of take or leave the, the sheep's foot, but it works and it, it's great for kind of removing a lot of material, you know, cause you can really get a, an aggressive cut done with that, as well as digging in and getting some nice fine uh, cuts done with that, that little um, uh, sheep's foot tip on it. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, the sow belly probably for, for functionality is has been my favorite. I'll give you another close look at it. Cool little case emblem on there. And uh, just some pretty good construction overall. And I think I've mentioned this before, but to me, case knives are an excellent starting point when it comes to traditional folders. You can certainly move up from case knives and move into things that are um, quite a bit more custom and really, really nice. For the money, you're just getting really good traditional folders when you spend that on a case knife. And so um, that's kind of the main reason I continue to collect them and really enjoy them. Really cool emblem here on this guy, on the uh, seahorse. And the seahorse has also been one of my favorites to carry around and use. Um, that broad, look at how fat that is. That big, fat Warncliffe blade that is so aggressive, so tough. So you'll be able to get some nice cutting and nice uh, digging and um, you know stripping with this kind of a guy right here. It is pretty wicked, pretty wicked, pretty mean. Uh, they stay fairly sharp throughout most of the carving jobs you're going to do, um, but you know they're not amazing. It's their, uh, their it's a case knives. I think it's their true sharp steel, which is what I hear is it's kind of like a surgical steel, but um, it's pretty nice. It's good and um, stainless and so forth. But um, yeah, it's it's not a super steel by any means, but holds up well. Anyway, that seahorse whittler is really nice with that big old blade on it. Then of course we've got the um, coping blade on it, which I don't know, again, I could kind of take or leave it. It's almost a sort of a sheep's foot as well. And I don't know, it, it works that when you get to these really, really small blades, uh, it's sort of like, what's it for? You know, the pen blade, obviously I can tell is, uh, you know, more or less a very small utility. I guess the coping blade does kind of the same jobs. It's I'm sure it's got sort of its own uh, history and its own in, in that coping blade design and the, the purpose for it. But um, I find the pen blade to be useful for just about anything. So anyway, there's a look at the Seahorse Whittler, real sweet. And uh, just a great looking one in my opinion. And that goes for, I think it's about 60, 65 bucks. And I think if I didn't mention it, this one's also about 65, 66 bucks. The Stockman, however, is one of those that is just, as I said before at the outset, a really, really popular traditional knife pattern. You're gonna find this in so many different varieties, covers, steels, blades, and so forth, bolster types and whatnot. Uh, you're gonna find it in so many different varieties. So you could, you know, as far as collectability is concerned, the Stockman is really, really up there. Uh, and this is kind of a very much a varied and, and different version of the Stockman with that all on it. You can see that there. So that'd be great for sort of drilling through wood, through leather and whatnot. Uh, you can see it's got a nice fine point on it, but as far as the edge, as far as that sort of cutting edge, it's not really a cutting edge, it's very much a drilling edge. And uh, it's gonna do fine with that. Definitely gonna do fine with that. So 
there's that. It's also got, as I said before, that sheep's foot blade on it, which is gonna help you get a lot of good work done. And then lastly, that not so broad clip point blade. So good general use with that. And uh, it's gonna feel good, pretty good in hand. You know, quite a bit uh, slimmer than the sow belly is, but um, much easier to carry because of its size as well. The weight on it, I haven't been listing any of the weights on these, but I believe this guy is less than three ounces. I'm gonna say that's less than three ounces. I know that the seahorse is less than three ounces and they feel about the same, around two and a half. So I'm gonna put that at about two and a half ounces, maybe slightly more. This guy right here is also really nice looking. And that's the mini copperhead, also with the pen blade, so getting some good utility cuts done there. But then you've got a nice little whittler there in that uh, Warncliffe blade as well. Very, very cool looking and just a great design, great pattern. Uh, this guy comes in at about 50 bucks, 49 bucks, something like that, and a weight of 1.3 ounces or so. With, um, I'm gonna say that's the a navy blue bone, so not the denim bone like this um, like this peanut is. They're very, very similar. You can hardly tell the difference, but they call that one navy bone. In any case, both really good looking. And again, the peanut, I want to give you guys kind of a, a good side-by-side -side of the peanut versus the mini copperhead, because they're very similar kind of in their, uh, both in their utility, their appearance, and in their size. Um, big difference being that the peanut has two blades coming out of the same pivot, whereas the uh, mini copperhead has two separate pivots, as you can see there. So, but there's a look at them side by side. Blades are pretty much equal as far as their utility, but the copperhead has a bit more you know, to grasp onto as you're trying to control that blade. So from that standpoint, you're gonna be able to do a little bit easier carving and uh, whittling with that mini copperhead than you will be able to do um, with that peanut there. So I think I've talked about this before, but to recap, you know, why would you buy some of these traditional folders when you have more modern folders available to you? Kershaw Leak being one of those, a very popular one. Um, a little bit less money than some of these and very utilitarian. Works really well, I really enjoy carrying it. Why would you buy one of these instead of one of these? Well, let's be honest, probably you're gonna buy one of these because you've already got some of these, at least today. Um, one of the reasons you would choose one of these types of knives over something more modern is mainly style, mainly because you like the way it looks, you like the way it feels. And trust me, dude, there is something special, something different about that spring snap to one of these traditional folders that you just, you don't ever feel that when you have something like this in your hand. You never, ever, ever get that sensation, that pleasure from, you know, the opening of that, that hard spring, you know, and the, the feel of that snap. That's it. It's just, it's got a real quality to it, man. It's got a real interesting and genuine, true quality to it that unless you, unless you're into knives, you may not ever recognize this, may not ever feel this, may not ever know this, but that little snap, that the feel that, that comes from these types of knives uh, is really special. And so you, you connect with the knife on a much more, um, I don't know, I don't want to say visceral, but a really personal level. Uh, you, you feel the fact that all these pieces were fitted together and that uh, those springs had to be tuned just right and you know all this stuff had to be milled and, and fitted just right in order for all this to work. And they're able to, del to deliver that to you for a pretty nice price. Again, like 50, 60 bucks for a lot of these. Um, it just, it feels really nice in your hand, feels really great to use. And so there's absolutely a style and a feel to these traditional folders that makes them super, super attractive. And I could talk about that forever, but um, that's kind of what it boils down to for me. Certainly it's not as quick to use as far as utility is concerned as something like this, but uh, that's not the reason you choose one of these. It's more the style, the more, more the feel. So one more time, let's talk about some of the ones that I've used in the past and that I really love. The peanut, we covered that already. This guy right here is the Mini Trapper, and it has been one of my favorites, probably still is my favorite traditional folder. Uh, not this specific folder, but you know, uh, I'd say this size of the Trapper and the Trapper pattern in general, 
uh, for me, I just really love it. The half stop right there is really cool. I always love that. And it's always got a nice kind of a spring back to it. And then back here at the open point as well. But that clip blade and that spay blade make it a great carver, a great whittler. Um, it's something you could certainly be carving out your bowls with uh, as you're making a spoon. So any, any uh, whittler that's got a good spay blade on it is something I'm going to be really interested in. As long as it's got, you know, just a good feel to it in general as well. But next to that, this one here, the mini copper lock, also really great. This one in the amber bone. It's just beautiful, man. And as I understand it, this is actually a pattern that is exclusive to Case. I think this is one they came up with that uh, is a variation of some other patterns that have been out there. I think that's right. I could be wrong about that, but uh, that's kind of what I heard, or at least uh, what I think I heard. But it's just a, a great uh, a great design as well. And the mini copper lock, I'll generally go for the minis as opposed to the full-sized guys because the big ones will be a little too heavy for what I want to use. You know, I can drop this in my pocket and just carry it around all day and kind of forget it's there. And then when I want to use it for some kind of utility job, I can. This one, of course, has the back lock, whereas the rest of these are not locking. Um, and that really gorgeous clip blade, it's more or less a Bowie blade if you, if you look at it. Yeah, so it's, um, as far as aesthetics go, this guy is just gorgeous. And so that's one of the reasons I've really enjoyed having that mini copper lock as well. But I've covered pretty much everything I want to on these case knives and I've demonstrated some of the, the cutting that they do and, and some of the ways I've used them to, to carve. Let's get into this guy right here real quick. This is the, uh, the GEC 13. It is the clerk. It's got this, oh man, the springs on this guy are really strong. That's one thing that's setting it aside. That is your, your pen blade, real nice, very sharp. This, these blades are made of 1095 as opposed to the, um, the case knife surgical steel or the stainless steel that they use on all these ones, the true sharp steel. Um, and it has, in, in addition to that pen knife, this really gorgeous Warncliffe. Look at that thing, that big elongated drop and that nice flat straight blade. Again, 1095 steel on that. So to contrast uh, the quality of the GEC versus the quality of the case knives, um, I said this, you know, I said this earlier that you get a lot for your money when you buy case knives because they look great, they feel great, um, have a nice snap to them and just good walk and talk in general. The covers are beautiful. They're never perfect. I mean, I've got a few of them are near perfect that, that I've got, but most of them you'll, you'll find little gaps and you'll find little um, transitions and so forth that aren't perfect on them. But it doesn't matter because you got so much for your money that you don't really care. When you almost double your money by going with something from GEC, you definitely do uh, see some improvements in the, the fit and the finish. So the transitions on the bolsters to the, uh, to the covers are much cleaner, much smoother. And that's going to be kind of the, one of the main things that I'll feel. And then the walk and talk, the way that blade comes out, the way it snaps right here, as well as at the opening. Oh man, that has got a nice, very firm, very firm uh, snap to it. And uh, just feels great in general. You can see this has two springs. No, it is one spring all in one. That's that is the main reason why this pen blade is so stiff to get out because it's overcoming that big fat spring. Whereas this guy spring is a little bit thinner, quite a bit thinner, much much thinner, and smaller as well. Larger it is, the fatter it is, the more resistance it gives. It's just kind of how things work. But uh, see that? You feel that? I feel that, man. And it's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Got myself this one for my birthday, I think, as I recall. Cool little shield on it. You could have that stamped or engraved yourself. But, um, you know, just... And this one is in micarta, so it's a nice kind of flat look to it. Not the gloss that a lot of these have. Um, so it's, it's definitely, you know, a lot of things about it sort of, sort of differentiate the GEC knife against all these case knives um, and set it aside as something certainly that's going to be kind of a higher priced item. 
is that going to be worth it to you? That's really what you kind of got to decide. This one, again, around 100 bucks, where most of these were in the 50 to $60 range. Uh, for me, I like that GEC knife quite a bit. I'll probably buy one or two more in the future, uh, but I do expect that I'll be picking up more case knives as well because you get, like I said, so much for your money, and they just look and feel so cool. I dig them. I think you'll dig them too, and I'll try to leave links to most of these guys down in the description. Uh, some of them will not currently be available, but I'll leave links to sort of uh, a broader category that you can uh, research and purchase from. I hope you guys got some good out of this video, man. I enjoy traditional folders. I think you'll enjoy them too if you haven't gotten into them. Try some out. I'm Late Boy Scout. Thanks for watching. See you later.